G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard, thank you for being here and giving me the opportunity to entertain you. It's Tuesday, it's news day, it's time to read some news, and I know some of you guys clearly can't read based on the comments I've been getting, but it's okay, I don't judge you, I'm just here to help, we shall read through the news together and figure out what happened last week in rugby. So first up, Andrew Porter was cited from by the Judiciary Committee after the test match, after breaking Brody Retali's cheekbone, uh, putting on a high shot. He got yellow carded during the game, but uh, the Judiciary agrees with the yellow card, and he has not received a ban as a result. So yeah, a lot of you guys might be like, oh, I told you, I told you. But the GOAT himself, Nigel Owens, uh, in his podcast last week, uh, I guess, you know, review last week, he thought that should have been a red card. Yeah, so he basically stated that Andrew Porter had the time to change his body angle, had the time to drop his high and go low and chooses not to. As a result, he made head contact, should have been a red card. So, yeah, there's two ways to look at it still. I think the, the bottom line here is it doesn't really matter whether you're right or whether I'm right or whether you're wrong, whether I'm wrong, it doesn't really matter. The, 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 the biggest issue here is inconsistency from World Rugby. World Rugby really needs to make sure that this is consistent. It's it, it really, it, whether it's a red card or yellow card, it's really inconsequential. What really matters is consistency. Like nobody wants a situation where we're seeing here today, where there's two interpretations of the same incidents by you know, top level referees all around the world. That is something that we don't want. We want a consistency in this regard. So, we're rugby ready really to clarify this and really tidy this up. And uh, yeah, uh, it, it, like really for me, it really doesn't matter whether it's red or yellow, it needs to be consistent. That's the key issue here in this, uh, in this, in this, uh, what do you call it? In this incident. So also with that in mind, World Rugby is getting sued. Yeah, they are getting sued for what's so-called irreversible neurological neurological impairments. Basically, people are having early onset of dementia. Uh, there, apparently, there was some talks about some kind of settlements out of court, but the settlements has been failed. As a result, players like Ryan Johnson and Steve Thompson. Steve Thompson, I know him better. He was the yeah the hooker for England Rugby World Cup 20, 2003. Uh, Steve Thompson basically has came out in an interview saying that he can't remember playing the game in the Rugby World Cup, winning the Rugby World Cup. He just he only remembers the game from like watching the videos, essentially, from like other people was telling him that he was in the game, essentially. He can't actually recall any of the game. Like, you know, something that probably the big, the biggest moment in his life, he can't remember. So yeah, he's part of the play. Uh, basically, these guys are representing 185 players uh, who are suffering this sort of issues. And uh, yeah, so it's probably, I think the red card probably gonna be, you know, a thing that's gonna come back more and more often in rugby in the future as a result of this sort of, um, yeah, this sort of court, I guess this court, you know, this sort of lawsuits that's being, uh, that world rugby is facing at the moment. And also in New Zealand, uh, it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was dumpster fire last week in news in the All Black camp last week. Two of the assistant coaches got fired in by Ian Foster. There has been a lot of talks for Foster to step down. Yeah, this this is a lot of people think that this is a bit of a cop out. And basically, Joe Plumtree, who was the forward coach, and Brad Moore, who was the basically the backline coach, both been fired. Uh, Fozzie basically used them. I, I feel like they probably used them as a bit of a scapegoat. Um, yeah, it's a tough decision. It's tough because a lot of people did was talking about you know getting rid of Foster, but being an international test coach is very very difficult, and the the experience that Fozzie have is pretty hard to replace. It, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you like him or you don't like him. You think he's you think a lot of people talk about Razor being a better coach. But the, the amount of experience that is needed to lead the All Blacks, it's, it, it's, it's not as easy as you might think, just like bringing in another head coach and it's gonna turn around. It's very, very difficult to, to, to run a successful international team. Just to give you an idea, right? 
um, Robbie Deans was a very, very successful Crusaders head coach. And he was brought into Wallabies after Eddie Jones left, I'm pretty sure. And the Wallabies just kept... He, did, he was not able to rescue the Wallabies. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, sometimes you have to cut these coaches a little bit credit. You might be thinking if you just bring in Razor, bring in Scott Robinson, the current Crusaders head coach, the All Blacks going to turn around. It's not really as easy as that. Yeah, unfortunately. The Wallabies have tried it. Did not work. I think you guys have to be a little bit more patient with that. Uh, what Fonzie has to bring. And basically, as a result, he has brought in Jason Ryan, who is a current forwards coach for the Crusaders, which is, I do think that they have identified one of the key areas of the Crusaders. I mean, the, the All Blacks was missing is that forward dominance. So good to see that they have brought in a better, you know, a good forwards coach uh, from the Crusaders. Also, Fozzy will be personally looking after the attacking duties for uh, over you know, Brad Moore uh, for the All Blacks. And also, they also clarified that, that there were some speculations that Joe Smith might take over or Joe Smith might get a more prominent role in the All Blacks. Uh, Fozzy has clarified that Joe Smith's role currently with the All Blacks is as a selector and will be continuing as a selector and has no really plans of pushing him uh, any further up in the coaching duties. He did do a bit of a coaching duties, when Fozzie and his team were sick with COVID, but no more than that uh, is talked about. Uh, so speaking of Razor, Scott Robinson, he will be the co, co you know co coaching with Ronan O'Gara, a Barbarians team against the All Blacks in November at Twickenham. So this will be a pretty big opportunity for Razor to show what he's got. Uh, but yeah. This is very exciting. Uh, like, like I just talked about, a lot of people think that he should be currently running the All Blacks. And uh, I do think that there's a lot more, you know, yeah, I do think that there's the needs, if he, they wanted to bring him in, there needs to be a transition. They can't just fire one coach and bring in another and expect the team to immediately turn around with so close to the World Cup as well. Um, yeah, so Razor will have this opportunity to make a statement on November, in November. There were also a lot of talks about Sam Kane should be dropped. I, I do think that, again, I, I do feel like he probably, you know, the, the captaincy is one of those things that, you know, when you had rich players like Richie McCall being the captain, is kind of like a no-brainer. But, yeah, I you know, there were some talks about him potentially being dropped as captain. The team announcement came out. He's still named as a captain. So there's currently... Uh, he retains his position at the captain spot. So there were also a little bit of change for the All Black squad heading to South Africa for the Rugby Championship. Ethan De Group, a lot of you guys are talking about Ethan De Group should be coming in. Fonzie did talk about Ethan uh, losing a bit of weight, getting getting better in shape. I do think Ethan is a good, you know, executioner in the scrummaging, executioner in the lineouts. I, I was a little bit worried about him, about his defense, but Fonzie felt like he has polished up his, you know, his. Um, his fitness and he's happy to bring Ethan De Groot into the squad and also Shannon Frizzell is added into the All Black squad as well for the South African tour and yeah very very good news for both players and their families uh, and also just just like most, more recently uh, Ofa Tuanga Fasi has suffered a bit of a neck injury during training so he will be out uh, as of today out of the tour to South Africa uh, again the All Blacks is running a little bit thing in the front rowers and also the front rowers hasn't been that dominant against the Irish. So they really don't want to miss out big names and to, like Tuonga Fasi <coughs> for the tour. And as a result, uh, Fletcher Newell is going to be caught up into the squad to replace Tuonga Fasi. Yeah, this is a big, big, big loss for the All Blacks. Lost to the All Blacks. So, so speaking of All Blacks versus the Springboks, there were some stats being crunched by old mate here, Yander Conan. Yander Conan, you're doing a great job. So he has done a really good job for for the for some of these articles. So he's compiled a lot of these stats. So it looks like the spring box has a slight advantage in um, 
in, what do you call it, in Johannesburg in the altitude, winning 9 out of 7 test matches over the All Blacks, uh, have a tiny bit of score advantage as well over the All Blacks, uh, whilst the Springboks having the least favorites place, Alofis and Sueto, Basically, uh, Svato is how I say, Svato, Sovato, Sovato um, are the least fair grounds for the Springboks. And also in Pretoria, the Springboks don't do that well, winning only one out of the six matches. Uh, that, yeah, one out of the six matches that was played in, uh, in, in Pretoria. So finally, overall, the Springboks seems to have a tiny bit of advantage, 25 wins. 24 losses uh, against the All Blacks with one draw, so a tiny bit of advantage. Uh, he also looked at some of the most recent recent scores. So ever since Rassi Rasmus took over the the South Africans, they the score has been pretty close, except for the the I guess the 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 post match against the All Blacks in the Rugby World Cup in 2019. But outside of that, the score has been you know within two or three points, uh, within two points, in fact. For every other test match so this is again it's gonna be a very tight contest going into this um going into this rugby championship i'm very excited let me know your thoughts and uh yeah this will be a a very 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 close contest indeed uh for the spring box as well they brought back two big names that was missing during the welsh test series duan vermulen the big man it's returns and francois staying my my childhood hero returns to the fold. Uh, the Vermula were having a, had a knee surgery, so he was out for the Welsh Test Series. And Stang had a bit of hamstring issues as well. So now he's returned to the uh, to the Springbok squad. So really good to see the two big names returning. Uh, for the All Blacks, there was a bit of an off-field issue as well. So there was a video that showed basically, um, yeah, Justin Marshall and um yuwani Iki, akira yuwani having a basically having like a uh look like they're like maybe it, it, it doesn't it doesn't show what actually happened they just we we'll just have a quick look hopefully just have a quick look so they, they basically were just a lot of noise you, you won't be able to hear anything what they're saying anyway looks like they're the two guys are just you know having a bit of bit of a bit of a verbal verbal argument uh marshall look a bit drunk here but yeah so yeah, there was a yeah. It's pretty pretty rare to see that the All Blacks, a former All Black, having a go at a current All Black, and uh, yeah, it wasn't a very good look for the team essentially. And there were some clarifications of what happened. Essentially, maybe the speculation is that um, basically Marshall was talking about some people shouldn't be in the squad. Maybe it has something to do with with uh, the alteration, but altercation not alteration altercation but yeah that's basically the speculation and uh, yeah there, there was you know fozzy had a talk to both to both parties but yeah it's uh pretty rare to see that all blacks essentially you know the all blacks family having a go at each other um yeah and uh, also for the rugby championships 12 referees appointed for the for the test matches not a single south african referee got a spot in the uh in the test matches so yeah so we can have a quick go through angus gartner gets the match mike adamson yeah red yeah yeah adamson who can't tell a four pass from a knock-on can't tell uh, you know four passes can't tell uh you know deliberate knock-ons gets uh gets a gets a shot at uh argentina versus australia luke pierce gets a spot for he's the best referee from England, in my opinion, Luke Pierce, very very good referee. He gets on the spot for South Africa, New Zealand. Uh, I think he, he, yeah, this will be a great match with a great referee on the sideline. And uh, for Carl Dickinson gets a call in for rugby uh, for Argentina versus Australia. Uh, Nika Amashu Kelly, he's a Georgian referee, and he's he's really 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 good. And he just he knows the law. To the dot, you know, he's he's so good. So yeah, good to see that he gets a spot for New Zealand, Argentina. Uh, Paul Williams for from New Zealand gets a spot. Nick Berry gets New Zealand, Argentina. Uh, ben O'Keefe gets Australia, South Africa. 
Matthew Reynolds, a French referee, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, yeah, this could be uh, this could be uh, another red card for one of the teams. We shall see because we know that Reynolds is pretty strict on that. James Stallman gets Argentina, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. Uh, Andrew Bryce from Ireland. Dan Murphy gets South Africa, Argentina finally for the final match. So yeah, Mike Addison, Angus Garner, South Africa, New Zealand. So yeah, we shall see. So we, we will, you know, games with Mike Addison. This could be another one where you can potentially see a red in one of these teams. Yeah, so interesting to see how that's how, how that's going to go. Uh, so for the Pumas, obviously Michael Checker has taken over and he has got, a, you know, despite beating, yeah, despite beating the Scottish in the three test series, especially in the last test match, he had a quite a few key players injury. So despite having those injuries, he was still able to beat the Scottish team. Uh, now he's going to be facing up his former team, the Wallabies. With the injuries back, so Thomas Kubili and Nicolas Sanchez returns to the squad for the for for Michael Checker, so he's gonna have a bit more power added into the team. Uh, he's also got uh, Santiago Cordero and Benjamin Uda Pileta also gets called back into the team for the Argentinian squad. So yeah, the Argentinian side is actually you know a slightly stronger against the Wallabies team. And for the Wallabies, things aren't looking good. The lock position has quite a few injuries. And as a result, Rory Arnold gets caught into the squad. He is an overseas, overseas um, player. I mean, I mean, we have some pretty good domestic players. Like, um, oh, we do have some injuries, actually. I thought maybe Angus Blythe could potentially get a shot. But anyway, they decided to call in Rory Arnold uh, for for um, basically he's coming in for the lock position but he, the reason that he's able to be included despite being overseas is, is that Samu Kurevi is going to be heading to play sevens yeah I know I know he wants to play sevens um, so he wants to get a gold medal so Rory Arnold gets that overseas spot coming back for the Wallabies you know locking position Quay Cooper also is expected to be okay to play so his injury is clear so he's probably gonna he's had a bit of a calf injury uh so he wasn't able to play but he is clear to to go quaid so yeah as we mentioned here quaid is expected to return uh also the wallabies caught up jock campbell for the fullback position uh matt gibbon also gets selected fraser mcgrath gets caught in uh, Lala Kafuketi gets caught in. Irai Simone gets caught in. Uh, Jordi Pate had a bit of a concussion, but he's back to fulfill the 15th spot for the Wallabies. So, yeah, a few new additions to the Wallabies team up against Michael Checker. We shall see. I actually, you know, you know, I'm, I'm actually not going to be surprised if Checker wins the first test over the Wallabies. Um, yeah, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be really, really scary for a Wallabies fan. The Pumas has looked really really good under Michael Checker there's some really big big improvements in the handling in the attacking structure and just having also that leadership that you know they also build a lot of that set piece play has been really drastically improved under Michael Checker as well so yeah uh, we shall see how this is gonna go this is gonna be a much closer test match for the Wallabies to to win than uh what than what we saw last year yeah expect that uh, also, England, uh, with following their wing uh, over Australia for the, what do they call it, Ellis, Ella, Ella Mob Cup. So they basically, Bill Swinney basically came out and said that um, they're going to continue to back Eddie Jones going to Rugby World Cup. He was contracted to go to Rugby World Cup uh, following this the there's a serious wing over Australia. I was very impressed with England, despite having so many injuries in their team, they were able to yeah, overcome the Australia away, uh, quite a good achievement. Uh, but there are still talks about getting a replacement for Eddie Jones following the 2023 Rugby World Cup. Uh, the man that's currently a big, big, big target for England rugby to pick up is the you know former England legend, uh, Owen's dad, <laughs> Owen Farrell's dad, Andy Farrell, current head coach of, uh, Scot of not Scotland, of Ireland. So Andy Farrell's contract for Ireland is due 
after 2023 as well after the rugby world cup so he's perfectly in line to you know take over england rugby and you know turn the turn the turn rugby football club around yeah really really really, really important there so the england rugby world cup uh so at the moment a lot of people was talking about england was having a bit of an easy run in the rugby world cup with their pool selection so currently england has uh who do they have in their pool uh england currently has um in pool d with argentina japan chile and samoa but the samoan team is going to be adding a lot of the internationals former all blacks uh lima sapwanga yeah that's a huge name going to be added into samoan team and also samoa won yes they won the pacific nations cup beating australia a to win that so a really really huge improvement for the samoan team as well so go into the rugby world cup um they're gonna be quite a big threat for england rugby uh, argentina also just the physicality they're gonna be bringing to the team so yeah pool d it's gonna be starting to look really really difficult england argentina with under checker it's gonna be quite difficult to beat japan also saw a huge improvement uh putting the french team under the pump in july test series almost beating the french in the second test and also with added samoa to bring in that wild card yeah bring that extra bit of a spice into the pool the uh yeah england might not have such an easy run to uh to make it into the into semi-finals as people were talking about uh going to rugby world cup so there was also some other talk about having a uh, club world cup rugby and as by this by the report that's just came out last week that they could potentially happen and uh, there could be a pretty radical shake-up to the sport globally and that is really good i really want to see you know the, the rugby is like especially club rugby is dying in basically super rugby in australia uh, new zealand's you know struggling as well having a global global game is really really good a lot of us probably wanted to see you know saracens versus crusaders that'll be such a huge matchup i think that's something that it's going to be really really good going into the future so there's a lot of talk that this could potentially happen uh, and it's currently penciled in for 2026 still a few, still a long a long way away but uh it's apparently uh something in the pipeline that could potentially happen and also there is a final opportunity for usa to qualify yes they lost two qualifications and they still have another chance to qualify so you know between november 6th to november 18th that's going to be a last bit of a opportunity for uh usa hong kong kenya and portugal to potentially qualify for a last spot for the rugby world cup uh also the england rugby rugby football union is going to be investigating newcastle falcons for potential racism allegations that was um basically you know exposed by luther, luther burrell in yeah so basically they're gonna be he basically came out and talked about how he was racially abused being called the n-word that sort of stuff during his time in england rugby and during his time uh in his club in newcastle falcons and as a result the uh yeah the rugby football club it's gonna be investigating the um the newcastle falcons and also yeah the rugby fo football club is gonna try step themselves onto a bit of a line uh, landmine here and uh they're gonna make a decision on transgender whether they're allowed to play in the women's game and uh we shall see we shall see and finally tonga has qualified for the rugby world cup after beating hong kong and uh yeah this is uh this tonga team whilst they did struggle in the pacific nations cup they have a lot of talent a lot of potential so i think you know with the talents that they've got given a bit more time they could be a threat in the world cup as well and they're going to be in the same pool as argent as not argentina as the springboks and uh i think it was it's i think it's springboks uh ireland and uh i think it might be might be uh scotland as well i think it's springbok ireland and scotland now tonga added into their pool and that's gonna be yeah it's gonna be a uh another huge 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 pool to watch out for in the rugby world cup so yeah 
everything is looking quite good for the Rugby World Cup coming up. And uh, let me know your thoughts on any of the articles today, guys. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate you being here. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll uh, see you guys, yeah, probably next week for more, more news. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Have a good week.